Today, I will review the LK Chen Rolling Dragon Longsword. True longsword is a large topic. So what I'll be covering is going to be divided into two sections. One, the immediate impressions and the construction of the LK Chen sword. And two will be my findings on how my belief is to best handle the True Dynasty or the Han Dynasty longsword. Let's talk about the history. The Chu longsword in Chinese history has a legendary status. Uh, even today, if you ask most Chinese people, they will say, oh yeah, the Chu Dynasty Changjian is famous. Uh, why exactly is it famous? And what's so special about it? Is a little bit muddy now. The closest historical document we have goes back to the Ming Dynasty, where Yu Dayu in his famous um, treaties on sword techniques called Jian Jing. In the first sentence he describes, I have spent many years studying the true longsword swordsmanship. And from, at that period, the entire manual devoted itself to staff techniques. So the entire manual is on staff fighting, and yet he refers to his technique as the true Changjian swordsmanship. And that raised a lot of questions, and that is still very much in debate uh, today. The earliest very detailed description of true swords was in a book written in the Eastern Han period where it's called Yue Jue Shu that details the struggle and the war between the kingdom of Yue and the kingdom of Wu. But within it there's a section on you know on legendary swords. And with and the last part of it there's a description section where it describes that the king of Chu commissioned the construction of several iron swords. One of which that he welded during the defense of a siege on his capital city where the king the kingdom of Jing actually surrounded the city for three years because they wanted to take the sword from him and when everything was seemed all but lost the king welded the sword and commanded the, the defense of the siege and almost miraculously they won the battle and afterwards, he remarked uh, to one of the famous sword uh, judges or appra appraisers that was it because of me, of my skill and command, or was it because of the sword that we were able to win this battle? And the sword appraiser uh, replied, essentially saying that, you know, it was because of both. The passage is quite long, but the idea was that it's because of the king commissions of the iron that we're in a new age. And it's also because of your authority that we're able to win the battle. And I think the significance of the passage really was that people of the Eastern Han period essentially is attributing the starting of the Iron Age or starting of the, the construction of the iron weaponry to the kingdom of Chu. There is a passage of text that went into detail in describing the appearance and the names of the three swords commissioned. One sword must have been a longer sword based on its shape. Another would have been folded and forged because of its pattern. And the third one seems to suggest to have a clear hamen, which means that there was differential hardening. This would suggest that during that period, refinement of steel and folding it and forging it into a steel sword was indeed a technology available at least as late as the Eastern Han Dynasty, if not during the Warring States period. And the second was that I needed to know well, what about mention of long swords, because in Chinese word, the word jian simply means a double-edged weapon. In the Warring States or pre-Warring States period, uh, the records do not differentiate between short swords and long swords. In fact, they also describe what we say as daggers as uh, jian as well because it's double-edged. So the earliest mention of long swords I can find is within uh, the, the Chinese strategy book called Liu Tao. Liu Tao is a very influential strategy book. He describes uh, formation training, battle formations, tactics, very influential. It was attributed to be written about the Warring States, maybe even earlier. It was attributed earlier to the Zhou Dynasty. 
And this particular book has a lot of military strategies and it has a lot of influential, influential for all strategists in the central sphere, including Japan and Korea. So that book, there's a specific passage within it about the training and formation of units. And one of the passages said that when you have soldiers of more special physique and they are order and disciplined and have good technique, you give them long swords and you form you, a long swords unit essentially. So, which means that even at that earlier period, you know, using long swords in battle formations was a thing. So did Chinese long swords exist over 2000 years ago? Yes, we have historical military records, uh, manuals that tell us, yes, they do. They do use in battles. And two, was it actually steel? Was it actually made of iron or steel? Yes, we do have descriptions uh, from the period saying and attributing it to the kingdom of Chu. So all that together, uh, we do have a special uh, weapon in our hands that are very purely accurate. The sword itself is a little bit less than 1.4 meters. So you can see that for me, it is quite long. It's reaching almost at my chin. My initial impression of the sword itself is really that when you pull it out, the blade is really thin, uh, much thinner than you would expect on a sword of this length. In fact, the weight of the sword is only a bit more than two pounds. Um, put, put that into perspective, uh, a regular Qing Dynasty Chinese sword, properly constructed, is also about roughly two pounds. So really what you're getting is a double-handed sword with the weight of a single-handed sword. And the balance point is about one quarter of its distance from the handle itself. And the balance point uh, is a little bit more forward but it does feel very comfortable in the hand because of its weight. I can, I can swing it with my single handle problem because, you know, once again, two pounds. So because of this, uh, the sword, when you hold it in the hand, immediately what it feels like is that it feels less like a long cutting sword and more akin to a mixture of almost a poarm, a staff, uh, and also a spear. And this has been a interesting property and I think also a lot of people have commented that when you hold it, you, the, the immediate feeling is it is a bit unfamiliar in the hand. But for me though, because I've been doing you know, Chinese martial arts for a number of years, it's also strangely familiar to me. I f feel like I have been trained to use something of this property, but has never been defined or described to me exactly of how to use it though. The construction itself, the blade, uh, is once again a sided design uh, from what we know as a transitional. This blade was constructed as a larger extension uh, of the Chu Jian that I have previously reviewed. It's a sided as previously described. Uh, the, the pattern itself is darker, so it's slightly more heavily uh, acid etched and it's beautiful. Blade is very straight. It is more flexible than you would expect. If I were to hold, this, hold the blade and I tap it, you do realize that, right? It does indeed, you know, it vibrates. It's a little bit softer. It's a little bit more bendy than, than what you expect. However, handling it though, and you're cutting with it, it, it doesn't come in play at all. Uh, you don't feel that it's ever going to be wavy or bendy. When you swing it, it's a bit bendy. You can feel the flex if you, if you swing it. Uh, on the flat side and, and sort of swing it this way. However, uh, there is no give and there is no shake in any of the, the parts as constructed. My only small gripe is that for my particular sword, if you can see it, the blade is not exactly aligned with the guard. There is a maybe, I say five degrees difference where the edge is not perfectly aligned. And you can tell from the handle too that it's resin, it's, in, it's glued uh, with some kind of polymer or some kind of resin to secure it in place. The handle uh, is the same material used for the shorter Chu Jian, the, the Chu sword. Uh, so it's, but it's not slippery to me. For me, it feels fine. There are one, two, three, four, five uh, raised grooves on the handle itself and it provides a very secure grip 
and that you can feel as you, your hands slide along the grip of it. The handle is not rounded, it's oval. So as that was one concern that, that we, when I look at the sword that I had was that, well, if the handle is round, you know, how do I tell my edge alignment? In this case, it's not a problem. The handle itself is, is oval, it's not round. Uh, so the edge alignment, you can tell from the hand itself. So it goes from a more oval shaped towards the guard and towards a round shaped pommel on the, on the base. So the pommel is it, exactly the same design as the shorter Chu Jian, where it has taper. And so when the hand comes down to the end of it, you know, it, it's, it's more secure, right? Like this. So the guard design construction is, uh, I can tell, to pretty much the same uh, process as the shorter sword, where they use 3D printing uh, to print out the guard and also the pommel uh, for that construction, so which is you know very nice. The guard itself is a uncommon design from the Chu or Han period. However, it is made after a period antique, and so it is indeed historically accurate. Uh, the the guard itself is a bit more uh, elongated than what you think from a Warring States Qing or Han period where in those guards tend to be a little bit taller and a little bit narrower. Uh, in this case, you get a more classic T-shaped or cross-shaped guard. Uh, it doesn't exactly... I would say it doesn't offer that much hand protection because if the hand comes in on the top, you can see the fingers. If an actual cut comes to the fingers, I don't think it offers you know, a great amount of coverage for my fingers. But what it does though, is that it allows me to move my hand about within the handle without sliding towards the, guard, uh, the, the blade itself. So that was a surprising finding when I use it, was that it's not a great hand guard, but it's a great block for, my hands, for the sliding of my hand position. So the sword construction looks great. Um, it, is, it is a very comfortable hold in the hand because of its weight, which is only 2.3 pounds, I believe. Uh, so it's, while it's a very long weapon, uh, you know, you can't believe you're holding it, something that long in your hand, because really it feels, for me, it feels quite effortless uh, to hold it. it I, it's not something that you get very tired of uh, once you do a few swings. And so for me, I mean, it's amazing for me to hold it. I, I really enjoy it. And, you know, when you hold it, it really offers you a sense of freedom and power um, that you don't commonly, I don't commonly get this feeling when I hold a, uh, other longer weapons of this of this type, and I think it's it's a unique it's a unique weapon. All right, we don't we have not had other examples of it before, and so there doesn't have to be a lot of reference for me. But I do understand when I held it why during the period people would associate long swords and true dynasty swords with reverence, and I understand it because if I were a person this period, I was a hold of something of this weight and this maneuverability. You know, I will feel powerful, and a, and a sense of freedom is very empowering. I would even say addictive, even. Um, so my conclusion of what I find about the sword is that it's a unique piece of weapon uh, that's available to us because of its period accuracy of construction. That you can tell the the craftsmanship that went into it. That the person really cares about the design of the weapon when they made it. And it is also something that's not just a wall hanger. You feel something that you can really go to battle with. Uh, I mean, I can carry this. I, I do feel that when I have the sword, that I have this need to charge into a battle formation, right? Like it's not something, it doesn't feel like a, a piece of decoration. It really feels something that I can go ahead and use tomorrow. Uh, so I highly recommend it. I think it's well worth the money because of the amount of steel and the amount of blade you're getting uh, for, for this price itself. And it's a unique experience, and I think it's also very exciting for us uh, martial artists because it, it provides a tool for us now to explore a, a piece of, I guess, frontier of, of technique and usages. And also, when we want to recreate the high density, true density techniques, uh, there is no substitute in the sense that you need to have the proper tools before you can try and you know, explore certain techniques. It's one thing to think about them you know, intellectually and, th and think about theories and usages. It's a whole other thing to hold in your hand and has a actual to itself. You can feel connection to the people in the past and try to think about what they thought about when they had this weapon and what they would do with it. 
I, f I find it invigorating and refreshing for me. And so I truly enjoyed it. And I'll be using this sword for a long time to come to explore all kinds of techniques and all kinds of questions in my mind about you know, the swordsmanship of the period. Uh, so thanks for watching. <laughs>